Hey, what up you guys? It is Sassy Assassin here back with another video. Hope you guys are all doing well and are having a wonderful week so far. It is currently May 5th, 2024, and in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to a foodie beauty related video brought to us by Piggy and Gorlick Bread. So shout out to Piggy and Gorlick Bread for providing us with today's videos. Um, and I will be sure to link the original videos in the description below. Uh, yes, I know I'm reacting to a Gorlick Bread video, and I'm not the biggest fan of Gorlick Bread, but I've had a hard time finding a highlighted version of Chantel's About My Last video live stream, and Gorlick Bread is the only one that I was able to come across that react like where the reaction was done in a timely manner because i'm not about to sit here and react to a over an hour and 22 minute long live stream I, I just do not do not have it in me right now i'm sitting with a bad head cold and i'm already frustrated enough as it is so that being said the first video i'm going to be reacting to today is cheesy beefy pasta bake and show and tell live and this video is brought to us by piggy and then the second video is about my last video and that is going to be brought to us by garlic bread so without further ado folks let's get to like any salt on this hardly but now I need it. Yeah, yeah. Why? I know I said I would. Why so much salt when there's probably salt in the in the sauce? Like what the hell? I'm gonna be careful with the cheese, but I think it needs gravy. <laughs> it looks a bit dry, I know. But it's not like a really because I baked it, so the noodles kind of absorbed a lot of the. Yeah, you could tell she's not really enjoying this meal. And I'm surprised by how somewhat reasonably portioned this meal is. Given how, like, what we know, how much she could eat at one, like, at, at, at one given time. Sorry. It's been a while since I've reacted. Yeah, I made this. Makdu's cheese. Oh, hot. Yeah, it's a meat sauce with ground beef. Ah, thanks, Heather. Huh? What? Sorry, is this all we're gonna get now that you're back in Kuwait? Like, seriously? I know this video is a little bit old by now, but, like, really? I thought we were supposed to be getting a glow up arc and vlogs and stuff like that. Are you still recovering from your travel from Canada to Kuwait? Like, how many days do you need to recover from a day's worth of travel? Like, seriously. We will. Oh, I already <laughs> not to let things emotionally affect me in a negative way anymore, and I just kind of uh, deal with what I can control in my life, and the rest I just kind of leave it up to God, you know? Oh, I'll believe that one when I see it. I can feel rage bubbling underneath the surface. But I bet she's, like, she has to be careful because, you know, she's already been on a a seven day strike and she doesn't want to get another one but give it a give it a, a time you guys it'll happen hold on let me fix this let me sit down. 
So here's some things I got. So my 40th birthday, I think I showed you guys a, my mom was like, go up, like, don't come down yet, cutie. Like when I was upstairs and. Don't come down yet, cutie. I just think it's so funny, but weird. But she, mom calls her cutie because she's anything but cute. In the room and she like, I came down at the dinner table and there was like all balloons like you're 40 and there was this thing <laughs> so I brought... and then she had all my gifts like she does gift bags really nice but so gift cards clothes which I'm gonna do a whole different video with all my showing doing like a clothing try on and how I make my western clothes modest because the v-necks on those clothes in Canada are insane um so that you know mostly like monetary and stuff a hand-me-down Marcel face powder hypoallergenic Marcel is really it, it is hypoallergenic it's like a, a blush like a cream blush let's see how red I can make my cheeks hi I want to leave this planet okay my CPAP marks haven't fully gone away today what if I get perma marks for my CPAP what am I gonna do Oh no, I need to put makeup on before because now I look really like I have hypertension. I probably do. They wrapped up. This doesn't bother you? Oh. Jesus. Yeah, it's all used items from them. Actually, I showed you this. This is not a used item from my aunt. This is, I love this bag. Aww. I heard you could buy that like for 10 bucks on Amazon. And look, here, here here's what I say about this bag. Mace, does it really matter how much an item costs? Whether it's, or if it doesn't cost anything, whether it's homemade or not. It's the thought that counts. That, that's where I, I'm, that's where I'm at when, when it comes to, the, comes to, to this bag situation and then and just gifts in general from for me it's it's the thought that counts as long as you're, you're you're putting thought into the gift that you're getting for a person and not just like you know just buying something just you know to you know to appease you know what i mean it's like you can, i feel like it, it just you can tell you know what i mean i've i've gotten gifts from people from the heart like that you could tell it's from the heart and then I've gotten gifts from people where it's just like they bought me a gift because they felt obligated to get me a gift. And it's just like, you know, just it makes it all the more special when you're pick when you're getting somebody something that's that whether you made it or not, that that's from the heart. I love Alice in Wonderland, so it was cute. I don't know. I don't care where it's from. I don't care if it costs two cents. It's the thought that counts always for me because i don't really need like anything like i don't care about expensive really expensive things i can you know oh sure you don't you you don't care now because you can't afford expensive things right and money you cared okay we haven't forgotten chantel just because you deleted the videos from the those times doesn't mean that we we haven't deleted them we have them in our archives so <laughs> the internet is forever Chantel, whether you like it or not oh so if i want something more luxurious ever since she got with Sala, she pretends to be this humble girl that doesn't like fancy shit sure mm -hmm. yeah exactly I just buy it myself i'm not like, you know what i mean so but i probably wouldn't <laughs> okay and my aunt got me this book she thought would be helpful for me it's called the serotonin power diet use your brain she will open that book her fan must not know her yeah she won't open it it'll it'll just sit on her nightstand like it's natural chemistry to cut cravings curb emotional overeating mm -hmm. and lose weight boost serotonin to switch off your appetite oh okay well that will be useful i'll definitely read it I love hand-me-downs whatever like you know I'm not ashamed at all so this is not a hand-me-down this was a part of a, a birthday gift so this is like a um, Bath and Body Works thing I like the bag <laughs> it's 25 bucks I would never buy this now like do you guys remember how much I used to spend all my money like I think like 
when I think back, it's like, I'm so ashamed of myself. Like, you just recently spent how much money at Lush? And you're sitting here, like, com complaining about how much money you used to spend? You spent $300 at Lush. Given they were, yes, it was a gift card, but still, you didn't have to spend all the money. You could have just gotten what you needed and then, you know, save the rest of the gift card. I mean, I don't know how long those gift card, like, how, like... How long it lasts or whatever if there's like an ex expiration date on the, on getting a, a gift one of those gift cards but like that's what i would have done i would have just spent like a portion of money and gotten what i needed for the month and then just like come like come back to lush and get what i need each month or each time i, I if i run out of something and then if there is like an expiration date, you know, I make sure I spend all the money, you know, before that expiration date runs out. I would not ever spend. So this is this is why it's a hand me down. I would never buy this in like in my life. Instant detangling. Yeah, sure. Mm hmm. We've seen you spend a shit ton of money on food. OK, that just goes to waste to We've seen it time and time again in the villa, and we're seeing it time and time again here in the, the luxury fart box. I mean, seriously, Chantel, who are you kidding with this humble and modest act? In conditioner. So I use this after the shower. It smells good, and it's actually, like, pretty much almost full. And, yeah, my sister gave me that. What hair? You don't have any... Uh, Chantel. Do not sit here and act like you have like a full luscious head of hair. You are going bald and you're probably not growing your full head of hair because you're you're going bald because of alopecia. I don't know. Like it could be anything. She has a lot of hair care stuff. <laughs> this, which is good because I was out of shampoo and conditioner and I'm like I would never buy this either. These are expensive, I think. Um, Wella? Wella shampoo and conditioner with lime caviar. Color protection. I got another new wallet. Oh, I've seen that at Lucky's Marketplace. It is a little bit... Wella is a little bit expensive. Uh, but they don't have, like, the same size bottles there. Like, the only time I've been able to... Like, I've seen a uh, full-size bottle in that brand is if I'm going, like, uh, Sally's or whatever. But, see, my sister's since they they work like at a booth whatever but and they have to get all their supply their hair you know their supplies for their clients so they, there's a special store that cosmetologists could go to it to get you know all their stuff like half off and, and stuff so so you know for so a lot of times uh, you know for christmas and stuff like that and birthdays my my sisters will go and like get us stuff from that place that's really good name brand stuff for like more than half the price i won't open it because things are in here but um yeah she can do hair yeah she does it part-time does her own like client base she does we'll dye my hair when i'm there and stuff like that you know she'll what hair what hair the little bald patches the Stringy bald patches? I'm sorry. You know what? I don't think it's healthy that you dye your hair until given the state of your hair. I think you should just keep it shaved, in my humble opinion. Because, girl, you're now going back to wearing the powder and and the, uh, you know, I'm dyeing your hair. That is not, dyeing your hair is just, when you've got hair problems like that, it's not good. Not good for you. And that hair powder isn't gonna do any you know, do you any favors. Layer my hair stuff. And considering you're probably you're wearing a hijab and stuff all the time, like what what's the point? Like that. But my aunt is so cute. She got me these like because she thought I was getting my own place. So she got me a few things. So these are just like spoons. So this is like a, a spread spoon. Oh, so not only is she did she tr trick her you her 
her followers and her, you know, the viewers, she also tricked the family into thinking that she was move it back. You really, you piece of crap. You really are, Chantel. This is a, these little forks, they're perfect for my pickle picking. Urgh. Go. When I'm smoking shisha and having a tea or coffee, I could have a cup warmer. So this will keep your tea and coffee. But it's like a little candle set. So I'll probably just put this like, she gave me this Calvin Klein bag. I don't know. <laughs> like, the dice bag. Sister, like, I don't like it. It's too like, like too like older style. And I'm like, well, I'm 40. So I don't mind. I don't know. Um, I think that's about it. I have to show you. How do you consider $40 for shampoo high, but not for a plate of food? But I don't buy them. Exactly. Either, that's the thing. I would not buy $40. Shampoo. Exactly. You'll invest in, in, in all that food that you really shouldn't be eating, but you won't invest in things like good hair care, skin care. I mean, yes, she, she went to Lush and everything, but like, he, he just you didn't get that stuff with your own money. It was somebody else's money and hand-me-downs. I get it. You know, these days, hair care, skin care, it's, even if you're buying drugstore, it's expensive. I mean, even Elf is getting a little bit, some of this stuff is a little bit, you know, you get up there. I mean, especially if you're on a budget. But, like, it's an investment in yourself. You know what I mean? And for me, it's like, I, I, you know, I get like for like, especially skincare, like I, I get a, a kit, whatever, and it lasts me a couple months. So I'm not buying each month and, and I don't buy every skincare item every month because I can make them last whatever. Same with hair care stuff. So today, no, I do consider that high. So anything expensive you see me have right now, like has been a hand-me-down for my family. Like I'm not, like the most expensive thing I have, like my, my ring, my glasses. Your ring was found on Etsy for like $50. Bitch. Really? You're telling me that that's a $15 worth Etsy rig and you're acting like it's some sort of precious gem girl you know what you probably did before even coming to Kuwait you went on Etsy okay and then you found the rings ordered them and probably got like expedited shipping or whatever and then traveled to Kuwait with these rings it to, only to act like you got the big Kuwait. That's what probably happened. And then when you lost the ring, you just went and got another one or whatever, or one similar. <laughs> it's probably not even real gold. It's probably gold plated. Um, but you know what though? No shame, okay, but still it's like, do you all remember how she acted when she got the rings? She was like she got it from Tiffany's, you know what I mean? And it's like, bitch, now I'm finding out you got them for $15 on Etsy? Girl. And yeah, this is like, I don't know how much this was, is it 40 bucks? I would not buy that with my own money. Like, no. That's her point, that you won't spend it on products. But You don't have to... You know, that there's so many... Oh, my God. There's so many options these days when it comes to skincare and haircare. You don't have to spend a shit ton of money on good stuff. Like, a lot of, like, the makeup I use today is drugstore. Because I find that, especially e.l.f., they do a lot of dupes. There are a lot of dupe brands uh, that are drugstore, and especially Amazon. Uh, you can buy pretty good K beauty brands on Amazon and stuff like that. Like, gee, I mean, I think like the the most expensive thing that I buy is the uh, the acne care system that I get 
it's the La Roche Posay one. Like that's like the I'd say the most expensive one thing that I get when it comes to like skincare. But you will on food. Um, I don't like spending that much money on food either. Bitch, shut up. Like, I'm very happy. <laughs> what the fuck are you even talking about? Food is your religion, your life, but blood. Like, you worship at the altar of food. It's your addiction. You will live by food and you will die by food. What the fuck are you even talking about? It is like the one consistent relationship that you have in your life. Cool. We're happy and content here with what we bought for groceries, like what we spent um, for everything we got. That's why I'm like happy we did the grocery order. And when we order out here, it's like eight bucks for the two of us. We can get like local food for really cheap. In Canada, though, yeah, I spent a lot of money on takeout. Yeah, but yeah, that's what you mean, me. Yeah, the addiction changes. What you're right. That's that's a big part of it too. Like I, exactly. Like I'm a food addict, so like, I I begrudge myself for spending the money on food, but it's like I don't have self control sometimes. You know, I saw like that's I prioritize the food over like conditioner. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not like well enough to travel for a little while, especially a huge trip. Where there's gonna be like a bit of culture shock. She'll be ready involved. in three months. Um, yes, she stress. will. But the thing is, I'm gonna be traveling with Salah. You know, inshallah. Like I say, all these things that we, inshallah, we will travel. Uganda bees. <laughs> Crazy. I prefer spending money on food that will keep me healthy than spending on frivolous hair products and name brands. Yeah, exactly. Hi, OG Lightwire. Please, you don't. You don't even do that. Why are you agreeing? Oh my god. You don't go through the same brain process of pros and cons of what you buy. You just buy it because you need a fix. It's true. She's so fake and preachy. It's true. Yes. If you don't understand addiction, it doesn't make sense. Internet. Oh god, just really, Chantel. Definitely fake and fucking preachy. My god. Okay, but anyways, so for this next video, that which which is done by Gorlick Bread. I'm going to listen to what he has to say because he doesn't do reactions in the normal way. Um, and then I'm going to leave my commentary for when his video is done. Because just uh, because of how the video is made, it's just to be easier for me to do it that way. So without further ado, folks, let's get on to the next video. And this video is titled about my last it's a live stream about my last video and just an fyi i will not be reacting to her live stream new playing phas phasmophobia just just no i won't i won't do it <laughs> What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Chantel did about a 90-minute live yesterday to address the video so many of us covered. She also attempted to do a gaming stream last night, which I don't think many people, myself included, are going to go over. Chantel, if you want to be a gamer, go over to your Twitch. You're just not suited to be a gamer. So she basically says the video that she did all the eating on wasn't what anyone thought it out to be. It was just a bad moment. And she says that, you know, she's been offered to go out and meet people and try to have a public life there, other reverts. But the reality is she isolates a lot. And she says, you know, it's just her. You know, she's got a lot of trust issues. She's been, quote, screwed over a lot. And that prevents her from going out and being social. She says the video was a lot of people overreacting to her overeating. This was just a second supper, you know. Her bed would be her going back into the kitchen to cook more. And she said that she made those pita pizzas, and she doesn't even like the ones that she bought for Salah. And at this point, she says she isn't dieting. She says that she's not going to age-restrict the video. Chicken Pickle had her, basically, synopsis of the video age-restricted. And Chantel offers, you know, YouTube can do that if they want, because it's not something she's proud of. And other than the fact that she posts those videos up despite all the negative reactions, she says it's important for people to see, quote, the hard moments, and that many people ask for them. She says when she does this, everything is on autopilot from the cooking to the eating and that none of the blame should be put on Salah, that she actually had more issues when she was in Canada because she got away with more. You know, basically stopping short of saying she was dishonest about the money she spent on food. She basically goes to say that her finances, quote, aren't what they once were. 
Now, she goes on to say that Salah doesn't control her. And she kind of follows this thought process who, through his, you know, one thirty in the morning teleconference with Vandalay Fragrances, now expressing he was just talking to a friend. And she says now that she told him that she was going to eat, but she also knew it was a long call, which would give her time to make a large amount of food. She says that she got help for all this, and she's continuing to work on the bed, and Salah got upset about the eating, but he understood. She says right now she could go anywhere she wants. They just want to stay indoors. And she says that her and Amberlynn Reed are really the only people online that share this full cycle. And that people just push bed aside. It's not taken serious enough. It's a mental condition. It's an addiction. And she isn't weak when she gives in. And she actually directly compares this to other addictions. And she says, you know, there's good choices and there's bad choices. But, you know, this is bed. She argues with the chat as she tries to create this argument of how this is somehow the worst issue a person can have. You know, she fails to comprehend that she buys the food and then goes to great lengths to showcase the issues. She proclaims this is something she, quote, has to deal with every hour and that the cravings are beyond her control. She said she didn't choose to be like this. It's a disease she has. She later says that she's been dealing with this for 30 years. She says people assume that she isn't in therapy, referring back to the one visit she kind of made a big deal about in Canada. And later on, she'll contradict this. But she says she's sharing these videos of her at this point for education to help people understand the disease. And that if the, quote, hate channels can be monetized, then so can she. She says if it was an issue with bed, she would have had a far larger spread, and that, that she wouldn't have monetized. She talks about how she's planning her meals, she's writing everything out, she's making sure she eats enough, and that she's rewarding herself and being helpful to herself. She goes on to talk about how this impacts her diabetes and how she needs to be more careful with the carbs and sugars that she eats. Now, she wanted to transition this initially into a dream, but there is another reaction channel in the chat paying her money to try to start drama, and I will once again say Chantel does a great job at not falling for this. Now, the fact that she wants to proclaim that everyone hates on Chantal when the first 50 minutes of this stream are basically her talking about how she hates herself in a degree and treats her body horribly in the process, I don't fully understand. But she talks about how loving and supporting Sala is, offering that, you know, they've been going out. They just haven't been filming it. And that today was a positive day. That Sala can't physically stop any of this from happening. And that again, He's never had to experience something like this because he is, quote, a young man who has only dealt with certain issues and can't deal with 30 years of someone else's problems. She says, you know, she can get assistance there. It's just the imaging that's expensive. And she cites that she can't get insurance given her current medical conditions. She says the jet lag impacted her sleep. She kind of goes back to this whole, I'm impulsive, I'm booking trips so quickly. She goes on about how expensive Canada was and her love for the Middle East. And she says, you know, the Middle East has no trauma, no negative history. It allows her to learn and be productive. And she said she hasn't had the passion to love, even though the Couples Channel now is nine days removed from that season three trailer. She says right now her energy needs to go into time with Salah rather than, and I thought this was an interesting choice of words, put on a performance that she does in the vlog. She carries this over to Reaction Channel saying, you know, she's done so much. She goes over everything they've done on the Couples Channel, which she says is nearly everything that they can. And then kind of retracts that and said, well, you know, there's other things. There's other malls we could visit. She said she's still trying to recover from her flight before she does vlogs. And she was out in Canada because she had no home there. In Kuwait, she has a home. She likes to stay there. She's a homebody. She said a lot of times they plan things, but she would much prefer to lay in the seal position because she loves that more. She then makes a very poor reference to Robin Williams claiming that no one knew he was depressed and then goes on to this kind of double standard of it's okay for her to stay inside all day because she could go out if she wanted, but reaction channels, they stay in all the time because they have no life. She then tries to create this narrative of I travel a lot and I learn about culture and those that don't are, you know, unintentionally ignorant. And she actually brings up, you know, Cuba, Thailand, the Middle East, as if she's taken something meaningful from all of these trips. She then has this irrational conversation about not leaving in the event of a war and then goes on to talk about a rental property that she would want to have going to Everest when it's, quote, warmer because it would be easier on her. And, of course, she closes out by saying, you know, no one is perfect, more so when it comes to religion. And then she kind of goes into this little bit of an argument that Christians shouldn't even eat pork and that, therefore, how many people should be talking to her about eating pork-based products as a reaver. And she goes on and cites the TikTok has shown her a lot of these things. She says when she's streaming like this, generally Sala keeps quiet in the other room. She's really trying to fight the urge not to rage or, quote, fight fire with fire. And that her life right now is a mess. 
and she needs to go ahead and focus on that. She finishes this video by going over this dream, and I've said this before, you know, she always goes over these very detailed dreams that, that are very, very story-like, that almost seem like someone that, you know, wants to drag something out for time or drag something out for attention or do something just mindless. So in this dream, she was running from someone. She had some of her channel members there. The entire story doesn't make any sense. She knows this, we know this, but she just laughs it off as well. You know, that's just my dream. I have these really weird and vivid dreams. And perhaps she does if she really did eat all that food and then go sleep on all of that food. I appreciate though you guys watching this. I'm going to leave you with the top comments from the Okay, that was that was a lot, uh, but a pretty sound analysis in my humble opinion. Oh, so there's a lot to unpack with with that. The level of delusion with Chantel is just astronomical to me. She had a chance to stay in Canada and get herself help with free health care. Okay. She could have gotten herself in like a one bedroom like studio apartment, maybe not in like the best neighborhood, but I think it would have been doable for her. But the fact remains is that her priorities are all out of whack because all she cares about is food and Sala. And ironically, neither of those things care about her. She's in a one-sided relationship with both of the two things, like two most important things in her life. She's got a family that doesn't give two shits about her because if they did, they would have had her involuntarily committed a long time ago. And now she's back in Kuwait. And she's, her life is in a shambles. And now she's complaining that she can't afford health care. What the fuck are you even doing back in Kuwait, Chantel? You're saying you, you wanted a health arc. How are you going to do, do a health arc if you can't even afford the health care over there? Make this shit make sense because to me it does not make sense. And then you're talking about how you would stay in Kuwait even if there's a war going on. Bitch, you wouldn't be allowed to stay. They would have your ass shipped back to Canada. You think... That this, that you, you actually believe you're fit, you're actually married to Sala. You actually believe that. No. Maybe she has papers. Okay. But I don't think that they're, they're actual legal papers. I think they were drawn up by, by nefarious means. Okay. Which maybe which is the why she possibly was able to get like a this fart box that she's living in. Okay, I don't know, but the fact remains, you're in a worse position now being in Kuwait than you were in Canada. Can't afford health care. You can't go anywhere or do anything. So what do you, all you're you're doing is just going to be sitting in front of the camera, stuffing your face for the next three months, until you can have to until you have to go and do your visa. Chantel, this is going to this this whole Kuwait arc shenanigans is going to kill you. It's going to be the end of you. And you think Stala is going to shed any tears over this? No. he He's probably going to have another Kybella lined up. That's how much you be to him, Chantel. You're just a, a walking piggy bank for him. Like, uh, it, it just... 
I've never seen anything like it in my life. This woman is 40 years old and she's acting like her romance is like some sort of like Romeo and, and Juliet shit. You know what I mean? Like, girl, he doesn't even love you. Like, but like, but like I said, if it were me, if I was a family member, I would have tried to get her involuntary committed somewhere. Just like they did with Eugenia, with, with her friends did with Eugenia, you know, Eugenia's friends did uh, for Eugenia. They had to literally trick her into coming to um, one of their, I think it was, I think it was Jacqueline Glenn's and her boyfriend's place, whatever. And, um, they had somebody there to evaluate her, and that's when she was uh, 5150, basically. That's what needs to happen to Chantel. She needs to be evaluated. I, 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 This is why I have a hard time believing she actually went to a therapist, though. Because if a therapist actually evaluated her properly, they would have you would think that they would have to take some form of action you know what i mean she because she's seriously mentally ill but then you have to remember she probably gave him a bunch of bullshit so it made made it look like she was sane but like seriously some form of intervention by the family needs to be done like oh my god this woman is seriously mentally ill but anyways that's pretty much all I have to say for this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Toodaloo, my loves.